Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session in the podcast where we get to talk about amazing engineers from everywhere around the world. People who are passionate about software engineering, you know, teaching people, mentoring people, uh, causing in one way or another impact to countless number of people in every corner on the planet. Uh, I've come across, you know, uh, some videos of uh, a gentleman that's seems like he's super passionate about what he's doing and really excited about kind of bringing you know precise information and really useful uh, kind of practices and patterns you know to the .NET world uh, i've come across you know david grace you know uh, youtube channel and now on linkedin and all that and i yeah. thought you know what i want to get to know this guy and i want to introduce him to the you know to the rest of the community david how are you doing i'm very well how are you doing I'm doing great. David, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, where you're from? How do you started this whole technology thing and what got you interested in it? Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm based in the south coast of England in a small town called Werbin. Okay. Um, it's quite near um, a city called Brighton, which some of you may have heard of. It's mm -hmm. about an hour and a half away from London in terms of technology. So I've always really been into computers ever since I, well, ever since I can remember, to be honest. Um, it sort of happened when I turned 16 around the year 2000 and dot com boom. Um, back in those days, I was, I'd say I was quite heavily into PlayStation games, particularly WWE wrestling. Yeah. And I did yeah. a couple of websites um, regarding the SmackDown franchise that they do. Nice. So they've got, um, I did a personal website on SmackDown 1 and 2 for the PS1 way back and then did one for SmackDown 3, did really well. Back in those days, it was very basic websites. I didn't have the sort of uh, technology understanding that I do now. So it was mainly HTML static files, um, but they, they sort of acted like a wiki. So they brought you the latest news, they, you know, how to do particular moves on a wrestler, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then as well as that, I was doing .NET technology. So I went to college, did a little bit of vis visual basic, a little yeah. bit of Delphi as well was thrown in for some unknown reason, but yep. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately that didn't survive. But, and then sort of in the final years of my college stroke university, I was doing, um, mainly working with, um, classic ASP and we picked up a bit on SQL server as well. And mm -hmm. also uh, alongside that as well as doing a little bit of um, PHP and MySQL, um, but I don't really sort of um, look at that now. It's mainly uh, the .NET side of things. Nice. Um, so that was that. And then, yeah, sort of got a bit lucky. So I left college um, 2006 and uh, I was working for the uh, Golden Arches, a popular restaurant, which I'm sure you've heard of. Um, and then, uh, yeah, got, got a bit lucky in my local newspaper, they were advertising for, um, classic ASP developer for a local web design company. Uh -huh. Um, so I sent my CV in, I went to the interview. I actually did a project, uh, related to classic, a my final assessment actually at college was, um, a final, it was a website, um, for, I think the, the tutor was doing a part-time tree surgeon company and he sort of wanted a website and i thought it'd be a good case study so i did that as part of my assignment obviously with college you have to write a lot of lot of stuff um for your final work and then i brought that in and it, the actual the person who was interviewing me said i probably wouldn't have given you the job but you brought the evidence there so that's how i managed to get um into the industry um, so I was in that job for a couple of months, mainly dealing once again with classic ASP and using Microsoft Access databases. And then I moved on yep. to another company and that's when I sort of started working with um, .NET. So it's that always is, yeah. mainly client side applications. Uh, so we started off .NET framework, mainly web pages. Um, must admit, I didn't get on too well with web pages, but then it got a lot better when um, the MVC came along and yep, using yep. ASP.NET MVC. Yep. And then it's just really continued like that up until, um, yeah, sort of now looking at ASP.NET Core, looking at uh, .NET 5, Blazor. .NET 6, and all, Blazor, all, of all, course. All the, all the fun stuff there. All the fun out. stuff, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, that's sort of uh, my history and my background. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, this this is very interesting. By the way, I also was into the WWF. Well, it used to be called WWF and then WWE. You know, I I, I remember all of them. The Undertaker, Shawn Oh, Michael, yeah, The Rock, yeah. Bam Bam, Bigelow, Triple H, The Rock, all of yeah, them, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And I think, I think what was Do- Doink, The Clown? I, I think that guy was a little bit more in the 90s or something. Yeah, like that, that was a bit before my time. But, yeah, I do remember him because I had a friend of mine at school who – was heavily into it. I had all the action figures and that. So you, I do sort of remember the Lex Lugers and <laughs> Bret Hart and all that. Yeah, yeah. Bret Bret Hart and Owen Hart. That that's the story that broke my heart. Owen Hart specifically with the you know with with the incident and all yeah. that. You know, I think I think they gave the world such a big show. They they gave like especially I was I was also around sixteen years old. You know, in early two thousand and uh, you know I I, I remember. Um, I was born in 85, so I remember, you know, just looking at these things. We know that they're kind of pretending, but there are parts of it that are yeah. super realistic. Like, they, they actually do break their arms, and, you know, they can they, it can be fatal in some yeah. situations, you know. Yeah, uh, it was a stunt that went wrong, wasn't it? Yeah, yep, yeah. that's exactly. And and it, and it I remember also, do you remember Mankind? Uh, you yes, know, the, yes, the, the he, many faces of Mankind. <laughs> the many, many faces of Mankind. Yes. Cactus Jack and... And then Kane showed up, and then it was and, a very yeah. interesting. So, so I remember, I remember being gravitated towards the excitement of it. I think a lot of us, you know, at a time, were just looking, and you know, just there's just some supernatural thing that's happening. A guy jumping from like, you know, I don't know, twelve feet high, whatever. Yeah. You know, it, it was it was crazy. But um, you know, let me let me ask you this. Okay, you know, you you started you you dabbled a little bit with with some different technologies mysql you know delphi and all that i remember these early days where you know working with net was was very hard you know i remember visual studio 6 you know yeah. and i remember uh you know a lot of the things that we take for granted today these things didn't exist there but let me ask you this what got you gravitated towards mentoring and putting content out there, like being able to kind of sit down and actually wanting to teach people something? How did that start with you? Go ahead. So I think I was going through the motions, sort of doing, almost doing like get, getting a little bit comfortable with what I was doing. And I was realizing that there was quite a lot, lot else out there. And w- one thing that I sort of found was, um, so f- the first thing to do is obviously to read about it, learn about it. The mm-hmm. second part is to actually do it so you get a better knowledge. Mm-hmm. But the third part as well, and that, this is what I've found, is that to actually teach it, you can actually get a much better understanding. Yeah. So I sort of, you know, I've gained a lot of knowledge um, over the years, but I think with a lot of developers, we get very comfortable in our position. Yeah. And we don't really do a lot with it. So I wanted to share share it a bit more to the wider community so it started off uh, with my blog uh, aroundthecode.com so Mm -hmm. i literally just started that off as a blog and it's predominantly a blog still Mm -hmm. Uh, but over the over the last couple of years or so so i started that around the back end of 2019 Mm -hmm. and then yeah as you know as the years have gone on i noticed that my readers wanted um a bit Mm -hmm. of a bit more sort of um they wanted to be able to actually use what I was teaching them. So I was yep. doing a lot of tutorials on there. Nice. And then after that, so I get, I gave them the actual code so they can d- go onto the website, fill out their email address and it sends them a GitHub. Yeah. And then that sort of um, came onto the YouTube channel as well. So I wanted to sort of, I wanted to get a bit better with um, the, being the, in front uh, of the camera as well. And yeah. Just sort of, get better at presenting because this is stuff I've not done before. I don't do it yep. that often. And I just wanted to sort of um, get out there a bit more. So yeah, the YouTube channel. So what I try to do now is I try to write an article and do a video at yes. the same time. It doesn't always work like, like, like my latest one. I've done a bit yeah. of a mini course on app settings, um, which I haven't written articles for yet. But this is, yeah, as you're Seeing on screen, this is my latest article, just uh, relating to the solid principles. Nice. Um, I noticed that, that that does do quite well in Google. A lot of people are searching for it. That's what I'm trying to do at the moment, because in the early days, mm-hmm. I was looking just to do the stuff I wanted to do. But as I found, I wanted to sort of teach the stuff that people are actually searching for. So I'm trying to focus a bit more on 
stuff mm. like that. Hot topics and things that are hot topics, do. yeah. And particularly yeah. with a, a new release of .NET, that's when the website, because I started it in, it, it got bigger in 2020 and then .NET 5, I did some stuff for C Sharp 9, .NET 5 when it was still in preview. And that's when yeah. the sort of traffic really started to build. Yeah. So that's yeah. when um, I um, decided that sort of not just focusing on tutorials, but also um, going for the sort of latest news, the latest features. And that's what seems to excite people on LinkedIn, on YouTube and on the website. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Did you did you build this whole site from scratch? Pretty much. I mean, it's a WordPress blog, but okay. yeah, I mean, it. Uh, it yeah, it, it's taken many years to do. It didn't start yeah. off like this, yeah, I can assure you of that. But yeah, as time's gone on, I've tried to just build it up. So it started off as a very simple blog with a very basic design and then i sort of been building on it um as the uh -huh. years have gone on and so we had the blog and then i sort of built the video section in and then i got quite lucky uh linkedin learning approached me and they wanted me to do a few um courses which was the page you were just on yeah and yeah so that that then sort of got um, implemented into that as well. Um, so with the LinkedIn stuff, I've done a couple of courses for them now. Uh, the first one I did was uh, related to de dependency injection and .NET. Yeah. Yep. Um, so just sort of focusing on the principles there, why it's beneficial, um, the different lifetime scopes. Yeah. And then at the moment, I'm doing um, a couple of courses on Blazor WebAssembly. So the first one's already out. It's just yeah. how to get started with Blazor WebAssembly. So that's the first part of that um, looks at what WebAssembly is, how Blazor has sort of come about, mm -hmm. and um, looking at how, what happens when you actually create an application, you know, how, how it works. And then it goes into a little bit into Blazor components, yeah. just so the actual learner can get the... Um, Get, get get their first right. application working. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, yeah what you're seeing there. And then at the moment, I'm currently what's currently in production is part two of this course. So it's going nice. to focus more on Razor components in a bit more detail. Some of the more advanced stuff. Uh, nice. We're going to look at sort of API integration as well. Um, looking at ASP.NET Core hosted and having that separate application to work as a server side uh application alongside the blazer WebAssembly app and then yeah there's going to be a couple of other things as well um app settings with sort of configuration um having a look at that and there will also be um opportunities for the learner to to, to do an actual um like to do an actual is, yes a sort of yeah, yeah a sort of a sort of a, an exercise so they can actually nice. put what they've uh, learned into uh, operation oh that's and, beautiful uh -huh. and there will also be a bit about how you go about deploying it to ias as well um yeah, yeah so that's sort of um, where we are and then there's going to be a third part as well i have mapped out the table of contents for it but i don't know i can't remember exactly what that's going to be covering yet but so, that, so that, that that will be um that'll be um that'll be I'll be working on that in the new year I think so so David let me ask you this you know this is amazing this is great content you know I think yeah. I think within you know maybe less than a year or so you're going to be out there you know amongst you know the people that are well-known figures you yeah. know and, and I just wanted to be a part of this amazing journey of yours but you know I wanted to ask you this like what keeps you going you know what what where do you get your fire from I think it's just the case of I sort of enjoy learning, uh, you know, I enjoy teaching a lot. So I think, I think it's the fact that because I, I will be honest, I knew a little bit about Blazor WebAssembly, uh -huh. but not enough to um, sort of be able to comfortably teach it. Mm -hmm. But because I'm sort of going through from start to finish, it means that I'm able to sort of get an understanding of how exactly it works because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's a, if anyone's used Blazor WebAssembly, it's a, it's quite um, a step up from normal .NET. We're used to .NET applications being server side, mm -hmm. being able to connect to a database. You know, maybe you know, maybe being able to hide certain files for security. We well, can't do that with Blazor WebAssembly. You have to think about it as a front end single page application, like the JavaScript frameworks in Angular and React. So, 
I think it's that. It's just like being able to see how I've come from what I knew six months ago to what mm -hmm. I do now. And I think that's yeah. what sort of keeps me going and sort of um, actually doing it. And also seeing see, seeing the positive um, reaction that I have. That I have. So whenever yep. I get a LinkedIn, if I start sharing it on LinkedIn, I get, you know, several hundred comments and they're yep. generally positive. So getting that sort of uh, positivity um, is encouraging. In there, yeah, yeah. It's, it's obviously a very good thing. Obviously, you're still going to get the, the odd negatives or the people that are not sure, but you, yeah. know, you, you, you sort of get better as time goes on with that. Because when at first, when it was like, oh, um, you know, someone's put something negative. I was like, oh no, should I be doing this? But <laughs> so, like, as time goes on, though, you're like, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to deal with. So, yeah, 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 just generally the, the reception's been very good on it. So, that they're, they're the sort of things that uh, keep me going. Yeah, this is amazing. And it looks like, you know, like you said, for the most part, you know, here's the thing, you know, there will always be someone that will pop up. I mean, we're in the tech industry. There is yeah. there's some really, really smart people out there and they have very they're very meticulous. They're very, you know, they have critique, very high critique about certain things that they're, you know, looking into and they're looking for something specific. So obviously there will be a little bit of criticism, but it looks like, you know, for the most part, people are super happy with your content. They're super excited. This 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 one is almost you're you're almost getting up to one thousand likes. One thousand, yeah. That, that people great. are excited for C sharp eleven by the looks of it. <laughs> so 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 let me ask you this. What kind of challenges have you faced, you know, in this journey as you are growing your you know, kind of, kind of audience base, you know, you're trying to put content out there. I know there is the criticism. Sometimes people will come at you and, you know, say, I, you know, I wouldn't do it that way or this way. What have you been facing any struggles, any challenges, any hurdles, you know, as you're growing and learning more about, you know, the industry and the technologies that we're working with? What what's your biggest challenges at the moment? Um, so the biggest challenge I've sort of found certainly doing with um doing the website and the YouTube channel is just trying to get enough content on there. So enough people can actually enough. I've got a big enough audience to actually make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's, been, it's quite difficult sometimes to sort of engage what people are searching for, what people want. I mean, you can use all the metrics out there, but sometimes they just don't tell you the, um, the, the algorithm. yeah their story yeah, yeah. the old yeah. algorithm yeah. yeah so that has been a bit of a challenge that that sometimes has been um a bit difficult to sort of keep going when you're only certainly in the early days it's not so bad now but in the early days it was like you're only getting 100 views for a video that you spent nearly all day making yeah um so that's been that's been one of the challenges i suppose sort of going with the latest technologies as well yeah it, uh, until it's released, it's quite difficult to sort of get a gauge of how something's going to work because I know Microsoft will release a preview yep. of the, the latest update. A bunch of APIs and <laughs> yeah, but then then then, then as, as as they say on their website, it, it will yeah. like it, the, there is the potential for them to pull the um, actual update if they feel it's not ready. That's right, and. Um, that sometimes if I, if I want to, because I sometimes want to try and be the first person out there to, to report it. Yeah. And obviously, with it, it's all right. So it's okay with an article, but with an actual video, you can't go ahead and actually change it. So that's sometimes, it can be a bit unclear what the updates are until they've actually been released. So that's sometimes a bit of a challenge, but. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And, you know, I, I can see like it can be quite uh, interesting because, you know, you, you're probably getting a lot of people reaching out to you, you know, trying to find some answers to something that you've, you know, kind of demonstrated. But the API already changed or the technology doesn't work this way anymore. You know, do you just direct them, say, well, that I got upgraded? Do you try to kind of solve the problem? What what's uh, what's your methodology here? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I try to um, solve the problem. Um, it's not so bad once um, the update's been released. It's more so when it's in preview mode. It doesn't it doesn't happen too much at the moment, but there has been the odd occasion where I think I did something for Blazor and they changed the synth. The syntax was uh, changed slightly. Mm -hmm. And then someone pointed out, oh, this is not working for me. So in that situation, I went ahead and tried to see what the issue was and then 
went back to the person and said, yeah, it's, um, yeah, they, they, they've changed it. I've made the changes where I can in the article and in, in the code example. Um, yep. but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it can sometimes be difficult. That's, that's, that's very interesting. So, so let me ask you this question then, what has been the highlight, you know, your favorite moment in this journey so far? something that you always come back to as a good memory or a highlight that you go and say, well, there was a point in time where blah, blah happened. Yeah. What would that be? So I think that will be, so back in 2020, uh, during COVID, I had a little bit of time off work and I did want to explore um, doing courses, uh -huh. uh, online courses, but it was, I, I reached out for plural side, but they already had a lot of um, a lot of the .NET technology um, covered by other authors, other learners. Yeah. yeah. So it was difficult to really get in there. They did have some topics um, that you could teach, but yeah, nothing really, nothing really interested me on that. But mm -hmm. fast forward a year, and then um, LinkedIn Learning approached me. They've been watching some of my YouTube channels. And they said, "Oh yeah, we like your um, we like your content. Do you want to mm -hmm. do like a test video to see if you could become one of the learners?" And I was like, "Yeah, okay." So we so I gave that a go, and it seemed nice. to be all right. And then yeah, so with that, I did um, the first dependency injection course, which was released April this year. Yeah, and then very popular. That, it has a lot of likes. It has an <laughs> awful it. lot of likes. I'm, <laughs> I'm amazed how popular it's been, but I'm very grateful as well. Yeah. And then, yeah, and, and that's just led on to the um, three-part Blazor WebAssembly course, and I'm hoping um, that that will um, continue. Uh, but, yeah, it's got to be certainly the highlights so far, certainly them reaching out to me, um, actually, you know, inviting me to be one of their um, authors, which, you know, take a lot of pride in that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Uh, David, what's, what's in the future for you? What are you planning for? Like if I were to kind of fast forward five years from now, you know, do you, uh, maybe are you planning to write a book? What are you, what are you going to do? Conferences? What's, where do you see yourself? Oh yeah. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Um, <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, book at the moment is probably a big step up. I think maybe conferences, obviously uh -huh. we're coming into this post COVID era now where conferences are starting to happen face to face rather yep. than there's a lot of them happening in Europe. Like this is, there is. Like, yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. yep. All, uh, all, all the, .NET, Microsoft, you know, kind of yeah. creators of technology. Yeah, the NDC. I think I think yep. the NDC's come back in London. I think early next year. Yeah. Um. So that, that's potential, but I think that's probably a few years away at the moment. I think going forward, I'm predominantly going to just be continuing with um, my online courses and predominantly with my YouTube channel. Um. But yeah, no, I have I have looked into um, potentially doing a few more short courses as well. Mm -hmm. um, for myself on that, I've just released one, which is just a four part um, course just to do some of the uh, different areas of app settings in ASP.NET Core. Mm -hmm. So that be looking at, so that's actually looking at how the actual configuration works, how it's different to ASP.NET and .NET Framework, looking right. at how you set a connection string if you wanted to integrate Entity Framework with SQL Server. Mm -hmm. um, you've got environments as well, so what the different environments are and how you set up a custom environment, and mm -hmm. also how to implement login in ASP.NET Core. So I think, yeah, going forward, I'm going to continue building parts of the website. I want to introduce more short courses on there. Yeah. Maybe, may, maybe, yeah, do more short courses on there um, mm -hmm. and just see really what, where it goes from there. Um, yeah. just continue to be doing what I'm doing. And yeah, you never know in the future, might be doing um, a conference. That's probably more likely than writing a book. That would be cool. Book, yeah. Book, yeah, book, you need a big commitment to that. And I, I think at the moment that might be a li that might be a few years away. But yeah, certainly continuing what I'm doing at the moment. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, you know, the other thing that just comes to my mind, you know, where do you... When you are, when you have a question, we're trying to look for, you know, uh, information, you know, where do you go? What's your source, you know, where you actually, what's your go-to, you know, uh, source when you're trying to kind of learn a new technology or learn a new system or try to learn a new pattern? I think 
Yeah, it, it, I think it's got it's obviously got to be Google online and YouTube is obviously very good, but LinkedIn Learning, they've got a lot of fantastic courses out there that allow you to um, learn something. But yeah, it's, it's just really what I can find. I mean, so sort of building up quite a lot of followers now on LinkedIn. Yeah. And I think I'm up to four or 5,000. So sometimes yeah. actually putting a post out there um, <laughs> is, is, another, is another good way of doing it. So <laughs> it, it's just really, really what I can find. And also you, you uh -huh. can try and find it, but also trying to get a bit of education as well, sort of actually trying to... Yeah. I, th I think that's the best way is trying to find a little bit of information about it and then trying to actually do it yourself so you can understand. Yep. And then the point from there is, okay, so you've read the information, you've managed to actually do what you were intending to do. The third part is to try and teach it. So if you can try and teach it, then I think that is a good way of sort of understanding how yep. something works. Yep. Yep. And that's what I've done with Blazor WebAssembly. So to give you a bit of background on that, I've predominantly been using the Microsoft documentation for it. Nice. But I've, I've, I've sort of um, touched on things and I've gone away and tried to implement it myself. And I'm like, yeah, so I know how to, I, I've read it. I know how to implement it. Now I've got to try and put this into a online course video. Um, nice. So that's, that's sort of my sort of approach in terms of actually um, understanding and teaching and learn, fully understanding what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, David, do you have any mentors? Do you have any role models? You know, people that you, you know, kind of uh, try to, you're interested in their um, uh, kind of takes, you know, on the tech industry, the, you know, people that you kind of uh, very interested in their opinions, they kind of match I, up what you're looking for. Yeah, I think, um, well, Daniel Roth, I think you had him on your podcast. Yeah, that he's guy's um, nice. <laughs> yeah, he's um, very much um, part of the uh, Blazor web Blazer team, isn't he, at Microsoft? Yep, yep, he's, he's, yeah, uh, I've, I've cer I certainly see him at the fore forefront of um, any sort of .NET updates in terms of Blazor. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's the guy as well as continuously um, giving the updates on their YouTube channel. Yep. Scott Hales Hazelman as well. Yeah. Have I, have I pronounced that right? Yeah, Hanselman. Yeah. Hanselman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, he, he just seems to be everywhere. He's predominantly on um, YouTube a lot as well. Yeah. Um, so he's um, he, he's he's normally the he's normally the host of the actual updates. And yeah. all, the last couple of years, when I've been watching the um, updates on YouTube, I've always seen he's always been the forefront there. He's always been the person that you've noticed. So I think they're the two sort of role models. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't say I look at their content too much because I want to create my own content so yep. it's not you like, wanna, I, like you don't want a leakage like you I don't want no sure. I don't I don't want to yeah. start copying yeah. other people I want to do my own thing and I want to yeah. see how people so I try not to watch too much content yeah. that is related um to what I'm doing yeah but they're the sort of people you sort of see stand out and sometimes if they're given an update then they're the ones that you sort of want to listen to because they're the ones in the know um, yeah. So that yeah, there's there's the sort of role models um, that I look out for. Yeah, yeah. You you also have Steve Sanderson. You know, he's in he's in England, I think. You know, so uh, Steve is uh, Steve is basically the Wozniak of this Blazor project. He's <laughs> he's the guy that actually you know kind of played around with it. You never know. You never you never know what he's up to next, right? You know, like <laughs> he just did this NDC talk about why the web is like that, and he just went from the very beginning all the way up. Very interesting talk that he just gave recently. Uh, let me ask you this. You, you talked a little bit about Scott Hanselman. Uh, you know, he, Scott, I love that he diversifies his content, right? Uh, do you ever see yourself kind of uh, going a little bit more into the uh, YouTube shorts or reels or TikToks or something like that. You know, I find it quite interesting. Like I, I heard Fritz, I don't know if you know Jeff Fritz, he's, he's a very nice guy. Uh, he he also advocates for Blazor and all that kind of stuff. He's a, he's a part of the uh, dev dev at Microsoft, you know, the .NET team. And, you know, he said something interesting. He tweeted this the other day. He said, you know, content creators, especially when you're trying to do something in the tech industry, they're always in a race against the attention span which is decrasing over yes, time yes yes <laughs> so you you get to see it even on youtube you'll see people kind of they're with you in the first maybe 10 20 minutes yeah. and then psh, 
it drops, you know, they're like, you know, I, I don't want to hear this anymore. Are you are you concerned about this at all? What's uh, what's your strategy to deal with this? You know, so far, you know, scientists say the attention span now is around 12 seconds. You know, 12 every, seconds. 12 <laughs> seconds. Like, imagine this. Every 12 seconds, you know, our brains kind of reset, you know, and it's not a good thing. But nah. for content creators, it's it's a it's a great challenge. How do you deal yeah. with that? <laughs> yeah, it's funny you should say that. So my earlier videos, they were very excessive, some of them. I mean, some of the early ones are like 30, 40 minutes long. And yeah. it yeah, it, you do notice. I mean, even in the first 20 seconds, I see a massive dive. Yeah. Massive dive going down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so as time's gone on, so some of these earlier ones are massive yeah. i mean you're looking at the 35 40 35 yeah. yes they're ridiculous <laughs> and you got 17 <laughs> minutes there but yeah i've tried to um keep the actual video lengths now sort of the later ones are more the the sort of eight minutes yeah yeah that's, a, that's, a, that's a bit better the thing is when you're trying to teach something uh -huh. it's um you've got to try and get as enough, enough information so the learner can actually take something away from it. Yep. But certainly with the latest four videos, I sort of split it into the short course that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. And I yeah. split it out into five minute parts. So yeah. I'm hoping that that's a, well, it, it's a bit more niche as well. It's a bit more specific as to what yep. the user wants. And yeah, it's yep. a bit more niche, but yeah, certainly going forward, I have considered doing certainly YouTube shorts, which I think with that, I'd have to get very niche down on a specific. Problem. Yeah, you're gonna have to like. <laughs> yeah, because you've got. I don't know. I don't know. Was it a minute and a half limit? I think or? so. I think it's, it's like a something, minute. <laughs> something ridiculous like that. So it's literally gonna have to be straight in there. This is the problem. This is how you fix it. Good luck. And I think that's sort of definitely a strategy I'm certainly gonna look into in the future. But I do prefer creating content that's just slightly bit bit more detailed without yep without being too in depth if you know what yep. i mean yep i i you know i can i can definitely you know kind of see how can how challenging you like you know it's just the intro just you trying to explain what you're going to talk about yeah. Boom, the time oh, is I've, I've had to get the intro right down there yeah. i literally got it down to about 15 20 seconds because oh literally God. just seeing this nose dive <laughs> it's just like literally like okay i really need to be a bit no, no more 40 50 second intros because everyone's got bored by then it's time to it's <laughs> time to actually just like get on with it like, this is what it's doing right let's get on with it straight away <laughs> obviously got to plug my courses first right but that's literally 10 seconds like that, and then get into it straight away <laughs> so so by the way just just something that came to my mind you know the other day you know the very same audience will sit down in front of some a kind of Netflix series, you know, they'll, yeah. they'll binge watch a Netflix series for like, you know, five or six hours. I think there is something about content creation, you know, the captivation part of it, you know, can, how can you captivate your audience in a way that makes them really interested? They can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And what's yeah. going to happen next. I, I see Nick, Nick Chapsas does this with his um, thumbnails, you know, he'll be like, guess what i found out and then he you're gonna have to kind of click on the video to yeah. see what he found out right which is yeah. which is a great way of kind of enticing people to get people interested in general his content is great and he's very uh he's very very dedicated to this um but yeah it's it's a it's an ongoing challenge of tuning in your content do you feel like so 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 let me ask you this then um when you are editing your content right you, you created a video and you have all the content out there and now you're spending the day you're going to make sure that this video comes in the right way something presentable and something that people can consume and listen to do you think uh, a little bit about the longevity right like technology is a forever changing you know especially you know with .NET and c sharp and blazer and ASP.NET core every other day like who would have thunk it that interfaces now could have in, uh, implementations in them yeah right yeah. so all these folks that i interviewed and i have to go back to each and every one of them and apologize to them because they were actually ahead of time when they <laughs> put an implementation in the interfaces yeah. how do you how do you ensure that your content will have a little bit more longevity despite the forever changing like i can see you talked about dependency injection that's a pattern that's going to live 
for yeah, a while. It's been you know? around for ten years. I think yeah. that's that, that's the thing, isn't it? You've yeah. got to. Well, you can't really see into a crystal ball, but you've got to try and imagine what, what is it? Is this going to be like this in the next five years? I've, I've tried to do that more with the LinkedIn, with the online courses, more so than the YouTube channel, because I know with YouTube that doesn't tend, well, I, I say that it doesn't tend to last long. Some of the videos, some of the older videos are still doing quite well. I wouldn't say I'd do anything in particular with YouTube in terms of looking into um, how long it's going to be, but I try and at least try and see how it could work in the future. Yeah. Um, but it, it's very difficult to do because as you say, technology is moving along all yep. the time. Super um, fast, yeah. But it can be it can be very challenging. But yeah, it, I just because like with dependency injection, certainly the basics around mm -hmm. that sort of the scopes and how how it works, the abstract method, the abstracts and how that works is going to it's, it's already been around for ten. I've been using it for ten years, and yep. it still yep. works in a very similar way to how it did ten years ago. Yep. So with yep. that, it's a bit easier. You can almost see that a it's it's a very popular design pattern, and it's often used um, if you, if you're working in the industry. So I think and another thing with that as well is it's good to sort of choose topics like dependency injection. Um, where you know that they're going to be around, for, be around for a while, for, for yeah. a while as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but Blazer, because that has been coming on leaps and bounds since it um, originated a couple of years ago. That one's yeah. a bit bit more tricky. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but certainly what they're doing now is a step in the right direction. So I think w with the updates that they've had, they're likely to keep those updates. But I think certainly because the Blazer is moving so fast and they're, bringing in so many good updates, it's just going to be a case of having to um, just keep on reporting on the updates um, when they come available. So yeah, yep. it, it's a tricky one that is. Yep, 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 yep. So so here's here's one more for you, you know, so the technology is changing, there is a forever changing kind of uh, pattern in technology. Is there anything like a wish list? I know every engineer out there, you know, they have this thing in their mind and be like, I wish you know, .NET could do this, or I wish we could have this in technology in general. Is there something that comes to the top of your mind when you're thinking about something that would be uh, uh, very useful for engineers everywhere, something that would be useful to you uh, uh, personally when you're working with, with technology? Anything at all? Um, technology, what sort of... Uh... But by the way, for the people watching, I don't prepare these questions. I'm just having a conversation. Yeah. So if David is thinking, he's actually thinking I about. I am actually thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have a clue that question was coming. I can assure you of that. Um, yeah. No, I, I don't think so. Really, there's a, there isn't anything that comes to mind at the moment. Um, I think, as you say, what you said earlier about Visual Studio, that has come on le leaps and bounds. I think. Yeah. The good thing about the .NET, I know it's slightly going off topic a little bit, but the good thing about .NET is mm -hmm. the way you can actually um, it, it, it's you can actually compile the code and um, actually see the compile errors before um, you run it. Whereas I know certainly JavaScript, I know TypeScript has helped a lot out with that, but certainly the old raw JavaScript, it's a lot more difficult to sort of um, come up with, um, you know, come up with the um, compile errors on that. Mm -hmm. And also PHP and MySQL. I don't know what it's like now because I don't really touch it that much. Um, but yes, I mean, certainly I'd like to see more with um, WebAssembly. Um, mm -hmm. So I've seen how good it's been with um, Blazor, but I'd like to see that a bit more in terms of what else it could do, not just for .NET, but for other technologies because when technology, i was doing my yeah. when i was doing my research for it for the first laser web assembly course that i created yeah it, it was um it, yeah it, i was amazed as to what you could do with it i think someone recreated doom free into a web browser <laughs> and so it would be good I, I i'm excited to see what will happen um with web assembly going forward um yeah. because i think that yeah that's um that's, that's going to be a good uh, browser technology and just yeah just see what they, they can do with that speaking of doom you should see the the dude that kind of created doom into um into notepad notepad, oh, right. notepad. Yeah. so so doom in notepad 
you know, because why not, right? He literally yeah. kind of is flickering. See, the screen is flickering, but he's playing Doom on oh, wow. <laughs> How did he do that? There's some scary people out there, David. I'll tell you yeah, that much. There definitely is. <laughs> he's actually playing the game. Yeah, yeah. Just about to say it with all the uh, light. How's he done that? That's that genius. You know, yeah, he he just published that. That literally, literally six days ago. You know, he published that, and oh, wow. uh, it, it's quite crazy. The other thing, you know, you, you talked about Doom gaming and all that. I can see you have Spyro in the back there, so it looks like you're a gamester too. You know, uh, yeah, you not so not okay. not so much as I used to be. I've made more of a more of the bigger games that come out like Grand Theft Auto and all that. But yeah, you know, I've got I've got a PlayStation, you know, and. Uh, Grand yeah. Theft Auto and all that, uh, but yeah, no, I yeah. wouldn't say I'm a massive, but I, I did play the new Doom games that were released a couple of years ago, uh, on yeah. PlayStation, PlayStation 4, and yeah, they were they were very good to play. So, so, so the thing that it's just, just, it's just time though, it's just yeah, I'm trying I trying to do man. all this stuff and then. Yeah, I haven't, got, I haven't I, really got time for games, unfortunately. It's, 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 this is part of adulting, right? Yes, you. you you know you have reached that point where you have all the gaming systems in the world, but yeah. you're just looking at them. You yeah. you're not yeah. even... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, you're, you're just collecting dust, there. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. that's right. <laughs> you know, it, it's something that actually, you know, I remember um, I remember watching, like, an interview, and, you know, people were saying something to the effect of, you know, that video games are going to be uh, indistinguishable from reality indistinguishable from rea reality uh ign uh, is published recently a a video of a video game you know i i i thought that it was a prank i said well april is long gone you know this is not a prank for sure but the game was so good let me show you david it's it's yeah, crazy it's yeah it's crazy how uh let me see if i can get to it there it is so check this out so this is this is actually a video game. This here is a video game. It's supposed to be a first person shooter. Oh wow. Yeah, that's insane. You know, that's 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 pure insanity right there. Like if they haven't put in the little thing that says this is using Unreal Engine, I oh, that, wouldn't believe. That's realistic, isn't it? Yeah, Very that's realistic. Yeah, that's hyper realistic. Like that's I don't even know like Look at this. It's, yeah. it's insane. It's insane. And the other thing about this is that I don't know how they created it, honestly. I don't know how uh, they they set that together because graphics is not there yet. But, you know, someone made it. And the interesting thing about this with the age of AR, VR, you know, game development and, you know, people are all going into that metaverse kind of uh, stage right now. Uh, imagine having this as a wearable device and the reality around you it feels like an episode from uh black mirror i don't know i don't know if you yeah, watched black mirror i didn't know but no. they've got the vr headsets now haven't they i've got a friend yeah. of mine who's had a vr and yeah. i was playing resident evil that was that was scary that was crazy right in a horror movie with uh, vr it's so realistic as well <laughs> so so on this topic let me ask you this have you ever considered kind of you know dabbling into game development you know building you know you know maybe high graphical kind of experiences something like that it's the thing is and it, i i it might um might shock i mean because the website that i've done i've done pretty much most of it myself and it's yeah. i i think it's pretty you know it, it it's laid out pretty good but i'm not i'm not a graphic designer i'm not really i'm not a massive gamer so okay it's it's quite it, to me it would be quite a challenge and something I probably wouldn't want to do. Yes, yeah. I think I certainly try to do most of the design stuff myself, but it does take a lot more than doing the actual sort of tutorials, the actual yeah. back end side of things. I'm very much a back end .NET developer. Yeah. Um. So sort of the graphical side of things, I think, um, I would certainly. I don't. I. I, I sort of prefer doing the web stuff the back end stuff um from that so yeah it's not really something i probably wouldn't look into yeah yeah absolutely no understandable david you talked about being a back end developer working with you know core systems and apis what's your second favorite programming language 
Oh, my second favourite. It has to be React, I think. So I've dabbled a bit with Angular in the past. Um, but yeah, React, I just like. I, in fact, my website, um, some of the contact forms on there actually um, not React. Yeah. have a little bit of React um, yeah. rather than using raw JavaScript. I thought I'd give that a go. And yeah, it's just like the ease of use of it and what you can do with it. You can implement raw JavaScript with it, but also... Yeah. Um, it has its own syntax as well. So I, I just I find it a lot easier. The good thing about it, if you integrate it with TypeScript, is that you can actually have the sort of the similar .NET experience where you can yep. actually compile it, see where you're getting an error rather than, you know, it's, doing it's something vanilla. and ho hoping it's going to run. Yeah. <laughs> vanilla JavaScript, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that that's definitely, and so, some of the things you can do with it as well. And it, it's just... It, it, the way the the codes the, the code can be used is is a lot simpler and that that's always a good thing when you're a developer when you can actually read and understand the code it doesn't get too complicated so i think yes yeah, that's certainly got to be my um second favorite I've, I'm still um a fan of php as well i mean i've done bits of it with the, the website is a wordpress blog as well um i mean I, I haven't really looked into sort of the latest stuff with PHP. I don't know if you can sort of compile stuff, but certainly with the WordPress stuff, it's almost like doing it and hoping it runs. So I prefer it where you can actually compile it and see the error as you're, before you're actually running it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, a little kind of switch, ch switching gears. What about open source? You know, do you, you know, do you play around with open source, kind of contributing to open source? Do you... What's what's what has been your experience so far? Um, I haven't done a massive amount with open source. Um, I, I did at one point start contributing. That was before I did the .NET stuff, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, blog, and that it did try to become an author with um, Stack Overflow, but it didn't. It didn't really get my name out there. I noticed. I sort of did it I mean, yeah. for a few weeks, and then it was like, yeah, I mean, this is good and everything, but. And I think with open source as well, it'd probably be, I don't think I'd get the audience there. Yeah. Um, so I could contribute to this, have a massive contribution to that. And I might have my link on the GitHub somewhere, the but it would, yeah. it would be difficult to sort of say, this is me, this is what I do. Whereas right. if I've got my own website, my own YouTube channel, it's a lot easier. It's like, yeah, this is me. This it's is what I know, easy. Yeah, this is what I can true. do. So yeah. yeah, no, I've not really, re not really done a massive amount. I mean, there's probably been a couple of occasions where something hasn't quite worked. I know I've dabbled a bit with Umbreco. Yeah, um, I've written a couple of my own sort of components for things. Yeah, to, yep. to actually work. Um, but that was more sort of for my. I sort of had to do it for my work anyway. So it yeah. wasn't more. It was more sort of I had to do it rather than through choice. But it <laughs> it is quite a fun experience when you can sort of. Um, actually create something that is um available available yeah that you can all that it's available that you can sort of implement to your own bespoke specifications absolutely david you know i want to hear from you kind of an advice you would give to your younger self back in 2000 when you first started this i want you to give an advice you know from your own personal experience uh for content creators everywhere and you know, for people that are joining the tech industry, you know, for the first time and they're still trying to find their way, what do you have to say to them? I would say just keep going. And I know you, you're going to have a lot of setbacks when you're younger. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. I get a lot of people messaging me on LinkedIn or just seeing a lot of messages on LinkedIn, people struggling to get a job. And it's difficult in the, the early stages. The, the, the first thing is to get your foot through the door. So if you can be working on any sort of side project, look, anything you can demonstrate in an interview, then I'd certainly recommend you do that. Afterwards, once you've got your foot in the door, it's a case of continuing learning. Um, but don't, the one thing I would say is try not to get too comfortable. Try and keep on pushing yourself. Yep. Now, that might be doing what I'm doing, sort of... Um, doing online courses or doing YouTube videos, doing blog articles, or for other people, it's maybe just as simple as like doing a demonstration at work. But yep. as long as you're sort of, I, I think if you can keep on teaching that, then you're always going to keep on evolving and 
in your learning and in your education as a person. So I would say the first step is to get yourself through the door. You, you must have something to show to a few potential uh, employer. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're just saying, oh, I, I'm really interested in this, and they're going to ask, you don't um, have any, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, you've got no evidence. Like, yeah. So you can either do it as a college you know, college um, project, you yeah, know, college project, project, project that, yeah. I, that I managed to do, yeah. or you can do it. It's so so easy to upload a YouTube video now. You don't, you don't need a webcam, really, as long as you've got a microphone and you can do a bit of a voiceover. Um, OBS, um, good streaming service uh love OBS. Streaming, yeah. yeah love obs yeah, it's yeah. fantastic yeah um obs um do, do that um just try and get comfortable speaking just do some tutorials you don't even have to put it on youtube you just have to show that you understand it because once once you're in there it's a lot easier but once um but you really have it's trying to get get your foot in the door it's it's it can be really difficult particularly as there are a lot of people out there that are doing it and companies are always going to be a bit wary with junior developers are they are they up to the standard they the right, they be yeah. able to cope with yeah. um, potential challenges that come their way so yeah. yeah that would be my advice to anyone who's looking um looking, looking to become a .NET developer it, it the technology is always changing yeah. every year .NET release a new update around november yeah. and it's always a good idea to keep yourself up to date with that because it's bound to come up as a question in an interview. Absolutely. David, it's such a pleasure talking to you, sir. You know, you, you are too. you are David Grace and you are very graceful. You're a very nice person <laughs> and I appreciate your content. You are very uh, kind of, uh, you get to the point. I, I appreciate that a lot about your content. I watched, you know, some of your videos, especially the one where you're talking about you know, background services and workers yeah. and stuff like that. I have yet to find someone so precise, concise, just right on point. Listen, man, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, beat around the bush. Here's your, here's what you're looking for. And here's how you do it done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, so that comes from experience. That comes from a dedication. Yeah, I'm trying. Try, yeah, try the attention span. People haven't got the attention span. Yeah, is this, yeah, you're, is you're this what you've done? I'm off. <laughs> Catch them before you lose them, right? Yeah, exactly. But, exactly. That, before it you. goes down too much. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you so very much. I look forward to uh, watching more of your videos, seeing your content on both your YouTube channel and LinkedIn Learning. I hope to see you uh, at some point in time in one of these conferences. I yeah. hope you get a, a Microsoft MVP status at some point in I time so. maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, you come here to it. redmond and we'll eat some food together and hang out yeah. uh you know i i also hope that uh you know just you know your whatever your, your energy and whatever gives you the support this is uh, this podcast and this session is also my way of saying i love your work keep going i appreciate what you're doing it's useful for everybody it doesn't matter whether they just joined the industry yesterday or the been around for 22, 23 years like myself. It's still amazing content, still useful content. And, uh, you know, thank you for hanging out. Oh, well, thanks, for, thanks for, uh, for inviting me on. I really appreciate it, Hassan. Thank you very of much. Course, of course. And of course, for, for the people watching us, you know, I'm going to drop in the description of the video all the links, you know, his, you know, David's uh, uh, blog, you know, website, LinkedIn, uh, you know, uh, profile. You can see his LinkedIn learning uh, series. The guy is out there and he's putting a lot of information out there. It takes a lot of heart and a lot of dedication for someone to put something like that out there. Go out there and just check it out. It, it's really good. Even the long yeah. ones that he's saying, oh, well, that was really excessive. It's actually great. Just watch it. It's really good. And uh, of course, for the people watching us, if you have any comments, concerns, you know, compliments for Mr. David here, please, you know, uh, drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe his channel, you know, and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel, you know, and I'll see you in, in another video. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Have a good Thank day. You.